This video is sponsored by MSI. This video is part of a character creation series where we go through the modeling, the texturing, the rigging, and the animation of the character. However, I know not everybody will want to do every video in this series. So what I've done is I've provided a free project file in the description below where you can download and start from any point. So with that being said, let's get started. Super excited to announce that my new asset pack is available both on Blender Market and Gumroad. At launch, it's on sale, so the quicker you buy it, the cheaper it is. There's also a sample pack if you'd like to check out a portion of it before committing. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below. It's also worth noting that most of these assets were created on the sponsor provided MSI WS76 workstation. We'll talk more about this laptop and some of their other options I recommend later in the video. If you're following along with my project file, you'll see here that I have a grease pencil sketch with a front and side view that you can kind of trace over as you're modeling. And we're just going to go ahead and start by adding a cube here, moving it up into position. And then we're just going to scale that along the Z axis and switch here to the side view. And we're going to scale there on the Y axis as well. And then next up, we're going to apply our rotation and scale. After we've applied that, let's go ahead, tab back into edit view here, and we're going to right click and subdivide. And I'm just going to subdivide this a number of times. I'm going to go with something around 10. And what I'm trying to do is get that wireframe to match kind of the width of the teeth, and that'll make sense later. Now, unfortunately, matching the width of the teeth left me kind of off center. So what I'm going to do is add a center loop there by pressing Control R and then tab into wireframe and delete everything there to the left of the center. And that's so that we can add a modifier and make this whole process a bit quicker. Next up, we're going to add another cube and adjust it for this eyebrow. You're going to notice that we use the default cube quite a bit here. So we're going to go ahead, scale this down here, and we're just going to move this up here and then we're going to rotate that and scale that so that it kind of matches there along the x-axis and make sure that your y-axis is matching as well too you don't want this to be too thick so i'm just going to rotate this put this in the spot and then i'm going to switch to the side view here and we can go ahead and push this forward so it's kind of on the front end of the box there so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab that eyebrow, grab our cube, hit Control J to join, and that'll make it join into our mirror modifier. And you guessed it, we're going to add another cube. We're going to go ahead and scale this down. This is going to be the flap on the top of the head there. So I'm just going to get this to about the appropriate thickness, switch to top view, scale that on the Y axis there. And we're going to go ahead and scale that out on the X just a bit to give it a bit of width. Now we want this to kind of match the sketch here. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, move this edit object over. So the origin is on this side here. We can put that into place and then we can rotate that and scale that along the X axis, which will make it easy to kind of match these flaps here on the top. And again, we're going to grab that and hit control J on the main box there, which will join it into our mirror modifier. And again, we're going to add another cube. I promise this gets more interesting later. And now we're going to go ahead and work on the legs. So we're going to go ahead and scale these up into place here. So next up, just gonna to switch to side view, grab that upper leg, hit Shift D, drag that down on the Z axis and kind of put the bottom half of our leg down here. Now I'm gonna grab the upper leg and I'm gonna rotate that a bit. And what that's going to do is relax it a bit so that later in the series, when we rig this character, it'll work a bit better. Switching back to front view here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the upper leg and the bottom leg. And I'm just going to hit Shift D to duplicate that, I'm going to hold Alt R on that top piece to reset the rotation. And then we're just going to rotate this into place for the arm. I'm going to go ahead and grab a gizmo, set that to local, and move the bottom piece of this arm out just to kind of match this sketch a bit more. If we rotate to the top view here, I'm going to turn on my gizmo and I'm going to move this top piece just on the x-axis a bit to bend it and this bottom one forward a bit. And that's just to give our arm a little bend. Again, that's for later when we're rigging. That'll make that process a bit easier. Let's just go ahead and grab all these arm and leg pieces in this middle piece here. And we're just going to hit Control J to join all those in there so that they join with our mirror modifier. We're going to grab our cube, put F2, and we're going to name this object just to keep it organized. I'm going to call mine CardboBot. Let's talk a bit about our sponsor. The WS76 workstation is built for those who need every ounce of power you can get from your computer. I measured thermals during my render tests and I was impressed at how well it did. It has an Intel i9 processor, an NVIDIA RTX A5000 graphics card, support for Omniverse drivers, plenty of RAM for large scenes, Wi-Fi 6E, 99.9 .9 watt per hour battery life. This is a top of the line workstation for professionals. 
If you're interested in something cheaper for a hobby, I'll list some of those in the description as well, as MSI has a wide range of options that accommodate all creatives. Back at it, let's tab into edit mode here, and we're going to select the body, and we're gonna press P and separate by selection. That'll put our body out in its own object. We're gonna go ahead and name this body, and then we're gonna hit Shift D to duplicate that. Then we're gonna name this other piece, jaw. Now I'm gonna hide the body piece, and then I'm gonna select the jaw. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode here. And what we're gonna do is in face select mode, we're gonna go ahead and grab all these faces that kind of match around the teeth at the top here. And then I'm gonna to switch to wireframe view and use circle. And then I'm just gonna kind of select this pattern here. And you can see I'm following the sketch there. And what we're doing is creating a little jaw piece that we'll be able to rotate in place around that kind of center origin. So we'll go ahead and make sure all our faces selected, delete faces, and then tap back out in the object mode here. And you can see that we can rotate around this little origin now, which is gonna make it easier later for rigging. Next up, let's go ahead and do the body. So we'll turn the body back on and we're gonna tab into edit view here on the body. And we're going to do the same exact thing again, but kind of inverted. And I'm actually gonna select one row of faces a bit lower. And that's just gonna make it so that we don't kind of have a small gap that will be noticeable between the two, especially when we start adding some of our bevel modifiers. So we'll go ahead, just select this bottom portion here of the jaw gonna go ahead and delete that, just delete those faces there. And then if we tap back out into object mode here and we rotate this jaw, we'll get to see that we can kind of have this little gap there when they open the mouth. So next up, what I'm gonna do is press forward slash to tab in on that jaw so we can focus on it. We're gonna add a solidify modifier. And you can play with the thickness up here until you get something you're happy with. I'm gonna set mine to around 0 0.025 to avoid any overlap. And you can turn on even thickness and that'll help keep it even all the way around. And then I'm also going to set my offset to one to put it there on the outside. And great, so that's kind of something I'm happy with. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the body. So we're gonna grab the body and we're gonna go ahead and add a solidify modifier here. And I'm gonna use the same thickness for consistency and also make sure I have even thickness, but we're gonna leave that offset at negative one and that'll kind of keep it inside of the jawline so that they don't intersect. Let's go ahead and tab back in here on the jaw just with forward slash to focus and we're gonna add a bevel modifier. And I'm gonna set this to something really small and I'm gonna add just a couple segments there. Now what we wanna do is come to the shading, turn on hard and normals, make sure your auto smooth is enabled so that you can actually use that. We'll go back to the modifier here. I'm gonna bump this up to three. I think that looks good. And then to make this look a bit better, we can go into the geometry and set the outer here to arc. And you'll see that that'll help with some of those corners. Let's just go ahead and repeat that process on all the other body parts to give us a little beveled character like this. Now, next up, if you've downloaded the sample pack, we can go ahead and open the asset browser, go to crafty assets there, scroll down, and we have this little googly eye. So we'll drag that into our scene and we'll scale that into position here. If we tab into rendered view, we'll see that it already comes preset with some materials and I wanna add a highlight to the eye. So I'm just gonna tab into edit mode here, take that pupil and I'm gonna duplicate that twice and scale that down to match my sketch and just pull them forward on the Y axis to make sure they're visible. Then I'm just gonna take the same white plastic material in there and apply it to these two circles, which will give us this little highlighted eye look. I wanna join this into the mirror modifier because it'll flip my highlights and I want them both on the same side. So I'm just gonna hit shift D duplicate that. Then we're gonna grab the whole model, type in convert mesh, and that'll apply all the modifiers. And then we can go ahead and join all those objects into one mesh. I'm gonna join it into the Carbo bot mesh, and that'll apply the same name to the object. Real quick, I'm gonna tab into edit mode here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that center line there. You can just go ahead, alt click that edge loop and dissolve it and do that on the jaw as well, just to clean up the mesh a bit. Now this next part, what we're going to do is grab the top faces here. So I'm gonna use the circle select there by pressing C, just select all these top faces and top view, and then press E and move this down to give our box kind of an inside look there. Now I'm just gonna grab everything again and join those into the CarboBot model to kind of put it all into one model. And now what we're going to do is tab in edit mode, just grab some random edge loops and vertices and just kind of shift these around to give our box a little lumpy look so that he looks like a little more like a worn out cardboard box. Really just help add some character to it. And then later when we apply some of our textures, make them feel a bit more realistic. Now you may have noticed some shading artifacts around here that's easy to fix. You tab into edit mode here and you can turn on the knife tool with vertices. Go ahead, draw a class 
these here, kind of create some edge loops there. And then if you press Control R, and insert some edge loops down here and then again use the knife tool to connect them. Now this adds a ton of geometry. I personally don't think it's worth it because I don't think you'll even see those shading artifacts but if it's bothering you this is how you can go about fixing it. So we'll look at how to texture our character so feel free to download my sample pack so that you can follow along with that easily with some free textures. If you're in need of a computer to do 3D, don't forget to check out our sponsor, MSI, link in the description below. And I've also posted links to a couple different options, which I think are great options to get started. As usual, thank you for watching and tag me in your creations at Southern Shoddy on Instagram and Twitter so that I can see what you've made. If you're interested in supporting the channel or getting some project files, I do have a Patreon and products that I sell. Links in the description below.